Welcome back to Skin Composer with another major update. What we have here is a collection of bug fixes, filtering options, and general usability improvements. But what is most earth-shattering is the brand new Scene Composer. Scene Composer is a module of Skin Composer that allows you to design lightweight user interfaces quickly with a visual editor. That's right, I created a What You See Is What You Get app for scene2d.ui like a madman. I created this with the intention of making a demo of your UI skin simple, portable, and enabling a rapid prototyping. It serves that purpose well, but it has since evolved to become a fully fledged editor that exports to JSON or Java files. What I don't want it to become is a replacement for proper scene2d.ui code. Complex UIs will always be expressed better with direct code, and I don't intend to include every single UI option in my interface. This utility will be most helpful to beginner game designers, but it still requires some familiarity with Scene2D and its nuances. If I haven't lost you yet, let's get into it. The workflow is quite simple. What you want to do is create your full skin like normal, including all the styles that you intend to support. For now, I'll be using this basic skin called 2247UI. It has a kind of futuristic space theme, so we'll go with that. You can download from the link in the description and open it into Skin Composer. Now go to Project Scene Composer. We have several work areas here, the menu bar, the preview, the properties pane, and the path navigator. You have the basic options for saving and exporting here. Note that when you save, you're saving your whole skin composer project. The scene is tied to your skin. There's no need to create a new file if you already saved your skin. But you can export and import as many layouts as you want. That way, you can support as many menus or heads-up displays as you want. The scene menu has several options related to your layout editing, and view changes the behavior of the preview pane. The preview pane lets you interact with your UI or select individual components. The Properties pane changes the appearance and functionality of your widgets. If you're interacting with a layout widget, it will have options to set the children. The Path Navigator is a clean representation of where you are at in the actor tree of your stage. You can click to change your selection here as well. So Group is the root actor that is provided by the stage. You start by adding to this group. For ease of usability and explanation, I'm forcing you to make a table here. Click Add Table. You can choose how many rows and columns you want here. For now, I'm just going to select one cell because you can always add more as you'll see shortly. Now we're automatically taken to the properties of the table and it is highlighted in the preview. Remember, we're trying to make a futuristic UI here, so let's select an appropriate background. Select Drawable. These are the drawables that you created in your skin. Choose BG. Now we want to start making changes to the cell of the table. Click Select Child in the path. Click Cell 00. The cell is highlighted now. Go back to Table in the path. Some will find it easier just to click the cell in the preview. It's the same. The choice is yours. Let's add something to the cell. We'll come back to the cell properties later. Click Set Widget. You'll notice that options for widgets that do not have proper styles are disabled here. For our demonstration, we'll choose Text Button. Now think of your favorite space adventure. Frag and bag, shoot em up. In the main menu, you might have a choice for a single player mode. Click Text and type Single Player Campaign. You can press enter or click outside of the pop-up to return to the editor. 
If you want to change the style of the button, you can click style and choose from the available ones here. I only have default though. There are other typical options specific to text button here that I encourage you to play with on your own. Planning ahead, I know that I want my buttons to be aligned on the left side. By default, they are aligned to the center. Layout options like this are set in the cell, not the widget. Let's go back to the cell. You can use the tree again, but to navigate back in the preview, just click outside of the selection once. Now it says cell. Click alignment and choose left. You can't see any change in the preview yet. The real trick here is to duplicate this cell and its contents down several times. Then we'll make changes to the text. Click add cell and click duplicate down to a new row. Do it two more times. Deselect the current cell. Select the cell on the second row. Click again to select the widget. Change the text to Multiplayer Mayhem. See? It's aligned to the left. Do the same for Options and Exit. We forgot to add a logo, but it's not too late. Select the topmost cell. Add cell, new row above. Set the widget as an image. I made a logo drawable. Let's pick that. 2247, the war zone. Set the scaling to none. I feel the logo is too close to the buttons though. Let's add some spacing. Go back to select the cell, padding and spacing. I think 20 is a good value. It's hard to tell if this looks good with all the lines in the way. I want to see what this really is going to look like. Go to view, live. Now this is pretty much how it's going to look like in your game. You can click the buttons to get a real feel, but notice you can't select widgets this way anymore. You have to use the path to navigate. We've aligned the buttons, but it would be nice if the entire contents of the table were aligned to the top left. It's kind of in the way of the spaceship here. Click table in the path and click align. Top left. Now we have a new dilemma. It's too close to the border now. Let's add padding to the table. See? Much better layout. Notice how the background image gets stretched? Maybe using a table background wasn't a good idea. Let's restructure this layout. Now is a great time to show you how fast building with Scene Composer can be. Go to Scene, Clear. Add a table with a single cell again. Set the widget as a stack. Add the first child, image. Set the background. Set scaling to fill. Go back to stack, add another child. Select table and reconstruct your original layout. You can nest widgets inside of other widgets as much as you want. Okay, we have a good menu now. You might be asking how we can tie this to the rest of the game. It's very important to set the names of the buttons before we proceed. We'll have an easy way to access these items in the code. Select the single player button, click click, and set the name to single. Then proceed to name the others. 
multi options exit an added advantage to setting names is that you can go to scene find by name and type the name you're searching for now don't go crazy and name everything only what you need to refer to let's export to our game I've already created a new project from the libgdx setup let's see the available export options file export JSON is a clean way to export your layout with minimal code, but it does require importing a library to build your UI. Java exports directly to your source files with auto-generated code from JavaPoet. I'd suggest that if you're just trying to make a quick test. Clipboard is similar, however it copies code to the clipboard that you can paste into an existing class. It pastes with fully qualified names, however, so it requires a lot of cleanup and it's not really useful except for maybe posting some example code online. We're going to start with Java, but first we need to change some settings. File Settings. Make sure you change the package name and class to match your project. Make sure that you exported your skin from Skin Composer to the Assets folder of your project. Skin Path is the relative path to the Skin JSON from your Assets folder. Background Color is the background's render color. Now, File, Export, Java. Choose the path of the file. Now you can run your project. It works. Fiddle with the code as you see fit. Clipboard works in a similar way. Just click and paste in whatever you want to put it in. Perhaps this functionality will see an improvement in the future. Now, JSON is the cleanest way to export your UI. How it works is you export a text file to the assets folder of your project. You only write a few lines of code, then the builder library creates widgets for the stage. These are real Scene2D widgets, so you'll have full control over change listeners and other functionality not in Scene Composer. Let's take a closer look at how it's done. In your project's build.gradle, we'll open the Stripe library, my repository for widgets and utilities related to Scene2D. Don't forget to check the examples and instructions in the description below. Now let's go to our core class. We still need to instantiate a stage and add the usual lines for input and rendering. The Scene Composer lines are very minimal, just need to point to the file we exported previously. It renders, that is fantastic! Unfortunately, a menu that doesn't do anything is useless to us. We need to add some change listeners. Thankfully, we named our widgets so it's a simple matter of using the findActor method to capture those widgets and do whatever we please with them. In this case, I might switch to some new screens or set some values. Isn't that so much less code than what we would normally have to deal with if we were coding it by hand? That's what I've got to show you. There are many more techniques to learn with Scene Composer, but I encourage you to experiment on your own. This is much more of a reality now with instant feedback instead of waiting for your game to compile and run. Happy hunting, GDXers!
Maybe it's time to finally bring this home. What do you say? Show me. Don't slow down. <laughs> 